The Apache are several southern Athabascan language speaking peoples of the southwest and the southern plains. They are linguistically related to the Navajo. They migrated from the Athabascan homelands in the north into the southwest between 1000 and 1500 C. Apache bands include the Curicahua, Jicarilla, Lipan, Mescalero, Mimbreo, Salinero Plains, and Western Apache Aravoipa, Pinaleno, Cayotero, and Tanta. Today, Apache tribes and reservations are headquartered in Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and Oklahoma. Each tribe is politically autonomous. Historically, the Apache homelands have consisted of high mountains, sheltered and watered valleys, deep canyons, deserts, and the southern Great Plains, including areas in what is now eastern Arizona, northern Mexico, Sonora and Chihuahua and New Mexico, west Texas, and southern Colorado. These areas are collectively known as Apache area. The Apache tribes fought the invading Spanish and Mexican peoples for centuries. The first Apache raids on Sonora appear to have taken place during the late 17th century. In 19th century confrontations during the American Indian Wars, the U.S. Army found the Apache to be fierce warriors and skillful strategists. Federally recognized Apache tribes are Apache Tribe of Oklahoma, Fort Sill Apache Tribe of Oklahoma, Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation, Arizona, Chikurla Apache Nation, New Mexico, Mescalero Apache Tribe of the Mescalero Reservation, New Mexico, San Carlos Apache Tribe of the San Carlos Reservation, Arizona Tonto Apache Tribe of Arizona, White Mountain Apache Tribe of the Fort Apache Reservation, Arizona, Yavapai Apache Nation of the Camp Verde Indian Reservation, Arizona, the Apache, and Navajo tribal groups of the North American Southwest speak related languages of the Athabascan language family. Other Athabascan speaking people in North America continue to reside in Alaska, Western Canada, and the Northwest Pacific Coast. Anthropological evidence suggests that the Apache and Navajo peoples lived in these same northern locales before migrating to the Southwest. Sometime between AD 1200 and 1500, the Apache's nomadic way of life complicates accurate dating, primarily because they constructed less substantial dwellings than other southwestern groups. Since the early 21st century, substantial progress has been made in dating and distinguishing their dwellings and other forms of material culture. They left behind a more austere set of tools and material goods than other southwestern cultures. The athabascan speaking group probably moved into areas that were concurrently occupied or recently abandoned by other cultures. Other Athabascan speakers, perhaps including the Southern Athabascan, adapted many of their neighbors' technology and practices in their own cultures. Less sites where early Southern Athabascans may have lived are difficult to locate and even more difficult to firmly identify as culturally Southern Athabascan. Recent advances have been made in the regard in the far southern portion of the American Southwest. There are several hypotheses about Apache migrations. One posits that they moved into the Southwest from the Great Plains. In the mid-16th century, these mobile groups lived in tents, hunted bison and other game, and used dogs to pull while loaded with their possessions. Substantial numbers of the people and a wide range were recorded by the Spanish in the 16th century. In April 1541, while traveling on the plains east of the Pueblo region, Francisco Coronado referred to the people as dog nomads. The Spanish described plains dogs as very white, with black spots, and not much larger than water spaniels. Plains dogs were slightly smaller than those used for hauling loads by modern Inuit and northern First Nations people in Canada. Recent experiments show these dogs may have pulled loads up to 50 pounds 20 kilograms on long trips at rates as high as 2 or 3 miles per hour 3 to 5 kilometers per hour the plains migration theory associates the apache peoples with the dismal river culture an archaeological culture known primarily from ceramics and house remains
dated 1675 to 1725, which has been excavated in Nebraska, eastern Colorado, and western Kansas. Although the first documentary sources mention that Patchy and historians have suggested some passages indicate a 16th century entry from the north. Archaeological data indicate they were present on the plains. Long before this first reported contact, a competing theory posits their migration south through the Rocky Mountains, ultimately reaching the American Southwest by the 14th century or perhaps earlier. An archaeological material culture assemblage identified in this mountainous zone as ancestral Apache has been referred to as the Cerro Rojo complex. This theory does not preclude arrival via plains route as well, perhaps concurrently. But to date the earliest evidence has been found in the mountainous southwest. The plains Apache have a significant southern plains cultural influence. When the Spanish arrived in the area, trade between the long established Pueblo peoples and the southern Athabascan was well established. They reported the Pueblo exchanged maize and woven cotton goods for bison meat and hides and materials for stone tools. Coronado observed the plains people wintering near the Pueblo in established camps. Later Spanish sovereignty over the area disrupted trade between the Pueblo and the diverging Apache and Navajo groups. The Apache quickly acquired horses, improving their mobility for quick raids on settlements. In addition, the Pueblo were forced to work Spanish mission lands and care for mission flocks. They had fewer surplus goods to trade with their neighbors. In 1540, Coronado reported that the modern western Apache area was uninhabited. Although some scholars have argued that he simply did not see the American Indians. Other Spanish explorers first mentioned Cuarachos, living west of the Rio Grande in the 1580s. To some historians, this implies the Apaches moved into their current southwestern homelands in the late 16th and early 17th centuries. Other historians note that Coronado reported that Pueblo women and children had often been evacuated by the time his party attacked their dwellings, and that he saw some dwellings had been recently abandoned as he moved up the Rio Grande. This might indicate the semi-nomadic southern Athabascan had advance warning about his hostile approach and evaded encounter with the Spanish. Archaeologists are finding ample evidence of an early proto-Apache presence in the southwestern mountain zone in the 15th century. And perhaps earlier, the Apache presence on both the plains and in the mountainous southwest indicate that the people took multiple early migration routes. Conflict with Mexico and the United States. In general, the recently arrived Spanish colonists who settled in villages and Apache bands developed a pattern of interaction over a few centuries both raided and traded with each other. Records of the period seem to indicate that relationships depended on the specific villages. And bands a band might be friends with one village and raid another. When war occurred, the Spanish would send troops. After a battle both sides would sign a treaty and go home. The traditional and sometimes treacherous relationships continued. After the independence of Mexico in 1821, by 1835 Mexico had placed a bounty on Apache scalps sea scalping. But certain villages still traded with some bands. When Juan Jose Campa, the leader of the copper mines Membreo Apaches, was killed for bounty money in 1837. Mangas Colorado's red sleeves or Da Soda Hey He Just Sits There, became the principal chief and war leader. Also in 1837 Soldado Furoy, Hey, E Fuerte leader of the Warm Springs Membreo Apaches, was killed by Mexican soldiers near Janos. And his son Q. Kilo Negro Black Knife became the principal chief and war leader. They being now Mangas Colorado's the first chief, and Q. Kilo Negro the second chief of the whole Chihen or Membreo people, conducted a series of retaliatory raids against the Mexicans. By 1856, Authorities in Horse Rich Durango would claim that Indian raids mostly Comanche and Apache in their state had taken nearly 6,000 lives, abducted 748 people, and forced the abandonment of 358 settlements over the previous 20 years. When the United States went to war against Mexico in 1846, 
Many Apache bands promised U.S. soldiers safe passage through their lands. When the U.S. claimed former territories of Mexico in 1846, Mangas Colorado signed a peace treaty with the nation, respecting them as conquerors of the Mexicans' land, and an easy peace with U.S. citizens held until the 1850s. An influx of gold miners into the Santa Rita Mountains led to conflict with the Apache. This period is sometimes called the Apache Wars. The United States concept of a reservation had not been used by the Spanish, Mexicans or other Apache neighbors before. Reservations were often badly managed and bands that had no kinship relationships were forced to live together. No fences existed to keep people in or out. It was common for a band to be allowed to leave for a short period of time. Other times a band would leave without permission to raid, return to their homeland to forage, or to simply get away. The U.S. military usually had forts nearby to keep the bands on the reservations by finding and returning those who left. The reservation policies of the U.S. caused conflict and war with the various Apache bands who left the reservations. For almost another quarter century, war between the Apache peoples and Euro-Americans has led to a stereotypical focus on certain aspects of Apache cultures. Forced Removal In 1875, United States military forced the removal of an estimated 1,500 Yavapai and Dilsi Apache, better known as Tonto Apache from the Rio Verde Indian Reserve, and its several thousand acres of treaty lands promised to them. By the United States government, in 1847, Mormons settled in Utah and tried to convert the Indians to Mormonism, walk through winter-flooded rivers, mountain passes, and narrow canyon trails to get to the Indian agency at San Carlos, 180 miles to 190 kilometers away. The trek killed several hundred people. The people were interned there for 25 years while white settlers took over their land. Only a few hundred ever returned to their lands. Agriculture is an important part of Hopi culture and their villages are spread out across the northern part of Arizona. The Buffalo Soldiers of the 9th Cavalry Regiment replacing the 8th Cavalry who were being stationed to Texas guarded the Apaches from 1875 to 1881. Beginning in 1879, an Apache uprising against the reservation system led to Victorio's War between Chief Victorio's Band of Apaches and the 9th Cavalry. Most United States histories of this era report that the final defeat of an Apache band took place when 5,000 U.S. troops forced Jeronimo's group of 30 to 50 men, women, and children to surrender on September 4, 1886. At Skeleton Canyon, Arizona, the Army sent this band and the Karikahua scouts, who had tracked them to military confinement in Florida at Fort Pickens and, subsequently, F.D. Sill, Oklahoma. Many books were written on the stories of hunting and trapping. During the late 19th century, many of these stories involve Apache raids and the failure of agreements with Americans and Mexicans. In the post-war era, the U.S. government arranged for Apache children to be taken from their families for adoption by white Americans in assimilation programs.